guitars blend behind the camera and this is another one in the series of building the guitar kit we're going to be bracing the top for all intents and purposes the back bracing is going to be very very similar so we probably won't show them both I'm using a concave dish and a go bar there are many ways to do this uh, one little trick if you aren't, you know, this is your first guitar kit, you don't want to pay for all of the gadgets and gadgets. You can take hardboard, and we're all familiar with masonite, and you can make a frame that you mount this on, and in the center you can mount a screw so you can actually create an adjustable dish. While it may not be perfect, it will work because you can take a brace and you'll put it in here and you can actually adjust that radius using the screw as you push down on there you'll see how you can get it to match with using a screw and that'll work I mean it's not perfect but it will get you there you can also use that to cut a gluing call uh, you can use almost anything even a brick will work as a gravity clamp there is a method to my madness, but that doesn't mean that everybody has to do it this way. The braces that I'm going to work with first, I'm going to start up here. You notice I have one go bar right in the middle, holding, it's keeping this kind of steady for me. What glues do you want to use? Is a total choice up to use. I'm going to be using fish glue right now on this top. That's one of my favorite glues. You can use hot high glue. You can see there's a glue pot behind me. You can use tight bond. Uh, if it sticks wood together, it's going to work. The big important issue is joint integrity. You don't want to have big gaps. Now, what brace do you want to put on first and why? I don't really think there's a big deal as to what goes on first. I just like to work up here and work my way back. So, we're going to get started, and one reason why I really enjoy the fish glue is, number one, it dries very, very, very hard, has a very low dampening quality as compared to some other glues, and easy to repair, easy to clean up. You can see how much glue I have on here. A quick smear with my finger, get a good coating on it, and one reason why I kind of like this over the hot high glue is I don't have a problem with the working time much like you will with hot high glue. With hot high glue you have to pretty much stick it and go. This stuff will grab in a hurry, there's no doubt about that. It cleans up easy, but it has a much longer open time than your typical hot high glue. Now, I'm holding this down, as you can see. I'm going to take a gold bar or two. And I'm going to stick one right in the middle. I'm just taking a look that I'm on my lines, or at least reasonably so. I'm going to take a little call here. I can put this right on top. And I like that. Now I can put my truss rod brace in. I use my finger kind of like as a fence so I can lay my bead of glue right down the middle. All right. Now you can spread this with anything. Nice little spread. You can see a nice glue cover there. The trick is to have enough glue to see the glue, but yet still see the wood. I can see my center joint here. I know you can't see the marks, but I have little marks here that I'm shooting for. Now I can hold this down pretty well with my fingers. And it is quite surprising how quick this stuff can tack up. I'm going to put one here. And I'm going to put one over here. Now the other thing that I like to do is I call it ladder bracing, just a term I made up, it's nothing scientific. 
And what I'm looking for is to make my clamping a lot more efficient. Uh, go bar decks, I do sell them. Uh, they aren't hard to make. This is tacked up enough now, I can open this up like here. And there we go. And each of my sticks is going to give me between 8 and 10 pounds of force. That's about what I'm looking for. I don't need a high, a high amount of stress on there. Now you can see I have a little bit to squeeze out here. And that's exactly what you want to see. You want to see a little bit of squeeze out. You don't want to make a big mess. I do have my glue pot behind me only because it gives me instant hot water and it's easy to grab. And I can clean this right up. And that's one of the beauties of this glue. It is so easy to, to work with. I can actually come back with this tomorrow and use a toothbrush and clean up whatever I don't get today. Now I started talking about doing a little bit of ladder. You're going to see that in a minute. There is a method how the X braces go on. You can put these together all. I think I've showed this in a video before. If I just flip that one and put it on here, it does not match lines. So if it doesn't match, flip it, put it back together, and then double check. There we go. And it's real easy to get confused. Now, which one, how, and why? This brace has to go on first. That's the bottom brace. So I'm going to do my two X braces first. I'm going to get everything ready that I need right now. And you can see I have all these little sticks laying around here, and they are there for a reason. All right, glue, and you may want to wear a vinyl glove. Some people may have reactions that it does happen. Uh, it doesn't matter what glue, chemicals today, it's not so much the glue itself, it's the chemicals that they use for preservatives. Uh, I unfortunately am highly allergic to a couple of them, and I'm going to pay for this tomorrow, but that's, that's all right. Now, I have one brace. I'm putting the dab of glue in the joint here for the other one. I'm going to kind of eyeball this in and have fun with it. Okay. Now you notice I'm putting it on the line and sticking it and sliding a little bit. All right? And let me tell you, that will grab in a hurry. Do the same thing here. Uh, while we're talking here, too, there's talk about uh, what do you want to put on the top of the notch? Do you want to put a plate? Do you want to put a patch? I'm of the school, it doesn't matter what you put on the top, as long as you get something. Uh, I'm not a big fan of, of doing the wood patches, but I do know some people do like them, and I'm not condemning them. Now this is what I'm talking about ladder bracing. You can see how I take one across the other. This gives me an easy target to put my ghost sticks to. So I don't have to worry about trying to get down on top of a brace. And I see something here too. If you see this on, on your brace, don't use it. Now, you can see we're getting a nice coverage of glue. There's a little bit of a, a glue out squeeze here and there. And that's perfect. You notice how I put stuff on the ends. And here, I did stick before I got it to the perfect line where I wanted. I'm not going to worry too much about that. I'm close enough. I should have been a little bit more cognizant of it, but I was more worried about showing you what was going on. But you can see that's not a big major mistake. My X braces are now in. This is the next piece I want to put in. Sometimes you'll see this little notch on your bridge plate that will actually fit here so that your tone bar can go by. This is going to be a very important part of the guitar. This is your bridge plate. 
This is going to help carry the load of the bridge and the strings and the whole mechanism. And you want to make sure you have a little bit of glue wherever a piece of wood is touching another piece of wood. You want it glued. Now, it looks pretty good. And I want to make sure I got enough glue to go where I want it to go. And I have a little mark here. There. Now, I will take a little stick so I can kind of distribute the weight a little bit. This is a water-based glue. So I do like to make sure I have this clamped very well because sometimes the water will infuse into, into that piece of wood and make it cup and do some funny stuff. So I'm not afraid to bless this with as many ghost sticks as I can reach in there and attach. Now here at the center of my X, I want to put something right here. And I look for something like that. And I'll put it across and now I can put two gold bars on it. Now you probably see I have a couple different size of gold bars here. Uh, that will come into understanding later in this series when we go to do the tops on. Because I'll use this to put the top on. And it just is another way of showing you how to do something. X braces. We got the plate in. Now we're going to put our tone bars. Now I have a short tone bar and I have a long tone bar. Okay? For a reason. That's going to hit the edge. Now, again, a little pinky, a little bead of glue, a little dollop right there. I want my glue. And you can see that actually sticks pretty quick. A little more. Now, if you happen to come out tomorrow after you leave this all glued up and you're using the animal blues, sometimes you can get this to re-stick just by getting some hot water and steam into that. Now you can see an advantage to using this, if I'm trying to stick on top of here, I'll have a hard time to get that set. So I can just go like this. Okay. You can see how they're going in there. I'm looking to see if I have any gap. So the more gap, the more glue. And here I just want to open these up. And I'm looking and I can see the gap went shut. That looks good. That looks good. I'm going to put another one on there. This is a case where you can't put too many on. I will tell you that these things can be a lot of fun when one breaks loose. Now, I'm going to come across, put a couple more on here. I want as many reasonable sticks on here as I can get. Now I'm going to do the two back here just to get them done and then I'm going to move to the front and you'll see what I'm doing. I've already taken my little finger braces and I pre-shaped them and I'll put them in here and you'll see how I've, I've shaped them. I put a little bit of an angle on them and then I tapered them down and I did this on my sander. <clears throat> Some people just love to carve their own bracing, and that's absolutely wonderful. I, I just go to the sander, and I let it have it. Uh, when we start talking about voicing tops, that's not going to be involved too much in the kit part, but shaping the bracing is what they're talking about when they're talking about voicing the top. Uh, Alan Carruth is very 
good at explaining that process. And his book is one that I highly recommend when you get into the real science and art of building guitars. Uh, I think he wrote, uh, which one wrote the guitar maker? Uh, Cupiano. Cupiano. Cupiano wrote the guitar maker, that's a good book. Uh, as far as kits are concerned, uh, I do not do a lot of, uh, what word do I want to use when you want to, I don't promote a lot of other people's works because I don't want to sound commercial. Bill Corey put together a decent book on building guitar kits and it's worth the, the money and I do sell them but he also sells them, he has them also online and along with his book these are also some handy little jigs that he has in that book. Okay. Now, I showed you the basic shape and we have a long one and we have a short one. Okay, the long one will go here, the short one will go further down the X brace. Now, when I, when I say you want enough glue to see what you're doing with the wood, I run a little bead, probably about the thickness of a pencil lid. All right, and when I take this, I'm going to put it on the line. All right, I'm going to put it right into the X brace first and then squeeze it in. Now, you can, pro you can see the glues come out. And I will be honest with you, the amount of glue to learn how to put on a, a joint is tricky to learn, not impossible. Because the more glue you put on, the bigger of a mess you make. So the object is to have what you need without having too much. After all, why do you want to buy glue, put it on, and then scrape it off? Now, I'm worried about the ends, and I'm worried about up here. So I just take my little sticks. I'll put them on there. And the advantage is one stick will do two braces at the same time. Now, I have all of the braces on except for the sound hole reinforcement. They will go here. When I'm talking about the sound hole reinforcement, I'm talking about these. Right here. So, what is a brace job and what, what, why is it there? Well, you have tonal, structural, and anti-split braces. Tonal, tone bars, absolutely. X braces, tonal, but also support. This guy right here support, but he's tonal. These are more anti-split. Now that does not mean to say that they don't influence the top. If it's stuck there, it will. But these are anti-split, structural. This was called the popsicle brace. They put that in the Martins after the war. Uh, they had a lot of trouble with the tops cracking, so that was put in more for a warranty issue. Uh, for those who want to take them out, I recommend, don't take them all the way out, leave a little bit here to help carry the shear load from the fingerboard. Uh, I do shorten my own, when I build my own personal guitars, I do make them about probably one third the size of this. People will want to put a, a wooden patch, I kind of like to go with the cotton patch, and I will do the cotton patch when I take this off tomorrow. But for those that want to do a wood patch, as a repair guy, I've managed to repair a number of them. Uh, the best way to get the, the, the best result is going to be how you put the patch on the top of the brace. Well, this one is not the one that would get it. You're going to have the notch coming up through. So when you have your notch cut, so when you have a set of braces and you have them notched, the one on the top is the one that would get the wooden notch. So, how are you going to notch that on the top? Some people will put a nice little flat spot on here, but you do want to make it probably at least a good inch, inch and a half to each side. I think it works best if you actually notch right across here below 
and give yourself an edge where your patch can act actually glue in. So you actually create a notch. What this will do is when you have a brace with a notch on it like this, and I think I have one, yeah, I can have a sacrificial one. What will happen when it's notched here, and this is on the top like this, and as the guitar moves, there's no support here. So this is going to want to try to bow by putting a cloth patch or the wood patch across the top here that helps to secure that. It does put a good bit of stiffness because you're supporting the lines of force that rise across this way so it won't do that. It does help. It does give support. So make sure you have something on top of your notch, be it a wood patch, be it a, a cloth patch. You need something, don't leave it just notch you end up seeing this happen down the road. So, it's there for a reason. When the top is done, you tap on it. If you have a loose brace, you'll actually hear, you won't hear that, you hear that nice ring. If I have a loose brace, it's going to be dampening on the top, and it would probably, I never tried this before, but this might be a way to give you an idea of what a loose brace would sound like. There you go. Can you hear? There's like a little flappy. And that's the wood hitting the brace. I just take that on there. But that is a lot what a sound of a loose brace would sound like. So listen. You can hear it flapping. Now hear it. Much cleaner. That tells you your braces are secure. So now you saw how to brace up the top. Tomorrow morning, or when the glue dries, you put your sound support braces, and then you would be ready to go to the next step of getting the top and the back on the guitar. So I hope this helped you out a little bit. Uh, not hard to do. There's many ways. As long as you can clamp it to the top and get the glue on there, that is all that matters. And thank you. I hope this little video helps you. And thanks again for your support. And from Glenn and I to all of you, my shop to yours. Thanks again. That'll be on the outtakes, I'm sure. Now, I'm going to grab some more sticks here. I'm sure my friend will edit that out. Nah. Okay. Now, how... Oh, got that backwards. Outtakes.